Theories Explaining Behavior Theories Explaining Behavior is such a broad area of study, and the two theories which I have chosen are behaviorism and cognitive behavior. I intend to evaluate these two theories by examining and comparing them and then discussing their relevance to the teaching staff. There are various theories of behavior all of which can be useful in one way or another in helping staff to understand behavior. Some of the theories and their main focus include the humanistic theory which accounts for behavior by exploring an individual's inner feelings and self-image. In contrast to social learning theory where an individual's behavior is based on observational learning whereby a person repeats behaviors observed in another individual or group. Additionally, the psychodynamic theory highlights unconscious conflicts derived from early childhood as a justification for the ways in which they behave. The ecosystemic theory focuses on interactions with teachers and external subjects that may affect the school, suggesting that positive and negative actions affect the different experiences children might have within the education system, for example, in an environment where a teacher encourages his slash her student, a student becomes inspired to achieve their full potential due to the fact that this teacher has created a positive environment for them to flourish. Behavior Behavior can be defined as the way we act and interact with others and our environment, it includes our conduct and can be a response to stimuli. Staff will sometimes encounter behaviors that they may consider to be challenging and in such cases they would need to decide whether behaviors need to be addressed or supported. Hanbury defines challenging behavior as episodes or patterns of behavior which present significant risk of harm or restriction to an individual and the people around them and are likely to be severely detrimental to the quality of life experienced by those individuals and people around them. Hanbury, 2007. If a student decided to scroll through their phone in class, it would be detrimental to their life because they would miss the contents of the lesson. In contrast if someone with Down syndrome is displaying a behavior like biting their teeth and the behavior is not going to put them at risk of their quality of life, this behavior is not challenging to them but more so to the people around them. Whenever staff are considering a behavior it is important to look at it from Hunbury's perspective and ask themselves, does this behavior affect the progress of any of the students? At this point appropriate action should be made to resolve this problem. Teachers should also understand that all behavior is communication, and if people look at behavior that way, they will think about what the behavior is trying to tell us rather than considering it as challenging. The Code of Practice, a the statutory government policy that tells us how to support children and young people with special needs and disabilities in all education settings, advises us that when looking at behavior there are three paradigms from which we should analyze, social emotional and mental health. Look at Cheaper 1 and Chapter 6. Schools have a duty and responsibility to look at challenging behavior and to consider whether this behavior shows signs of underlying issues and what the causes may be.